All right, guys, so this is the, uh, the last video before the exam. I'm going to cover real quickly, maybe in uh, slightly different words, some of the information I covered on today's Zoom session, okay? Uh, this video, as well as the Zoom session, will be posted on our website, on Final Site. I'll make that available to you. We're going to need for uh, getting prepared between now, Wednesday afternoon, and Friday afternoon is found on Final Site if you go to Resources, Go to 2020 exam week Wednesday, okay? So hopefully you're seeing my screen right here right now. Uh, there are a series of folders within that resource folder, and we're going to be walking through some of those. My recording right now is going to be in the web and videos folder uh, along with Wednesday's Zoom video. So I'll make a continual reference here. Uh, one thing that I covered uh, and actually got caught up, cut off Zoom video was a couple words on cheating. Okay. Um, so, what I had mentioned, what I have learned, what I expect to be the case uh, is that um, obviously any kind of copying and pasting from an online resource, old fashioned like plagiarism, will absolutely be caught. Remember, we had some of that, uh, some of those issues with our summer assignment last year. Uh, I even saw it recently on some essays where people were lifting other people's words or lifting uh, words from a website resource. That will get caught, okay? It gets caught in our Google Classroom originality reports. It gets caught on turnitin.com. I can promise you the College Board will catch that. Some of the other things that they may catch might be slightly different. Um, if you have a group document open on your computer while you're taking this exam, uh, I am led to believe that that will trigger some of their warnings for plagiarism and that your score, uh, calling the spirit of uh, John C. Calhoun, your score could be nullified. So um, let's avoid having group documents open. If you've had a group document that you've been using and you want to use, simply print it out. And that's better anyway. You can own it and annotate it and have it in front of you for easy reference. I also understand that having Grammarly installed on your computer might trigger some plagiarism warnings. You're welcome to put Grammarly back on your computer when you are through with your AP exams, but I would highly recommend that you uninstall Grammarly uh, for any and all AP exams that you're taking uh, from home uh, for this 2020 season, okay? Uh, the next thing I'll point you to, guys, uh, were uh, some tweets that I've been putting. I've been kind of retweeting or quote-tweeting uh, this guy, uh, Trevor Packer, uh, at AP underscore Trevor on Twitter. He's the, uh, as it says here, Senior Vice President of Advanced Placement and Instruction at College Board. So he's been putting out a lot of communication about these exams this year. Um, and if you look at my tweet uh, dated May 11. I quoted him about AP students take these five steps ahead of your AP exams. So I would ask you to probably go ahead and open up that resource and take those five steps. Let's see if I can just share that screen with you. If I go to uh, his tweet, what, uh, what he's asking you to do is try the exam demo, complete the exam day checklist, Confirm your email address. We are now two days before the exam. Locate your email. So kind of make sure your uh, processes are in place, okay? Um, you can do all of those things except for the exam day final step in which he asks you to check in 30 minutes prior to your exam. There are also some resources about kind of getting used to the system that I've made available to you. Let's go back to uh, my resources, okay? We go to that exam week Wednesday folder. Go to the college board and rubric folder. If you were to click on the AP final exam prep sheet, uh, that will look like this here. Um, here you'll see down at the bottom uh, some things about the shared Google Docs and the Grammarly. You also have links like I just showed you from Trevor Packer. Uh, walking you through how to submit your DBQ, whether you do a copy-paste, attach a photo, or attach a file, okay? Um, those five steps are right here. 
So a lot of those resources that I just pointed to you on Twitter are also in this uh, AP final exam sheet that I've shared through Final Sight as well. Uh, a couple of notes on that, some things that I've been reading on Twitter uh, are that um, attaching a file is going to be preferable to copy paste. Uh, some students have typed in another document, try to copy and paste it, you know, uh, into the submission field uh, when they're taking the test. And a lot of them have run into difficulties and have been unable to submit their work. And now they're like looking at the business of maybe having to do a retake. It's apparently only affecting like one or two percent of the students. But for the A push exam being such a popular course, that would be tens of thousands of students across the country. And I don't want you to fall into that. So my suggestion is you use the attach a file mechanism uh, to submit your work. OK, uh, you've got to make sure that you hit the submit button when you are done. And you haven't done that until you received a message that says, and I quote, congratulations, your AP exam is complete. When you see that message, you know that you've done this the right way. OK, uh, let's go back to that document here. Um, and if for some reason um, you, uh, you, you're not seeing this, I really hope you are. Um, that, that you're seeing my screen here with this document. Here's what I've been talking about so far. Um, a couple other things that I've made available to you here are the, uh, uh, the AP testing guide. It's a, a long kind of document, but I've pulled it up for you here. Uh, this is your AP testing guide right here, okay? So it's 51 pages, and I know that's very long, but you might just kind of glance through that and make sure you have, you know, any questions about the submission process and such can be addressed there. Um, I've also given you an AP exam uh, checklist, or sorry, AP exam walkthrough video, okay? Uh, that is posted here. Uh, when we go back to my screen, uh, that is this YouTube here, the overview of the new testing system. So you've got uh, what appears to be a fairly brief video, uh, about four and a half minutes on the uh, exam walkthrough information. OK, uh, I've also got you an exam day checklist. Uh, let me go back to my document here. Here it is. Exam day checklist is through a Google Drive Uh that should be uh, one of these documents over here should be your exam day checklist. If I'm not seeing it right now, I will simply go to the document and I'm going to click on the exam day checklist. I thought I had that open previously. Um, but here it is, copy of AP student exam day checklist. So. I would recommend that uh, the hay is in the barn by Thursday night and you get some good Thursday night and you go through your exam day checklist kind of the night before that you prepare your space and you have this ready to go. OK, so that's on kind of settling your space um, and kind of the logistics of the exam in terms of preparation. Uh, I'm going to be pushing this video out to you here on uh, Wednesday evening, and you should have been engaging in content review for the past 10 days, really. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about content review and what you can do over, let's say, like the next 24 to 36 hours to make sure you're feeling good. OK, so one of those things is uh, watching some videos. Um, now, the A push history review videos, uh, that website is, well, let's go back to the document. Uh, that is right here. Okay. So, College Board actually has a, um, a place. Okay. Um, all sorts of topics. Now, Keep in mind, we only need to focus on time periods through seven. So for all intents and purposes, ignore time period eight, okay? 
ignore time periods one and two. But as you go through these videos, uh, what I would suggest is that you take one of two approaches. Either beef up on the knowledge that you think you know very well, or beef up on the knowledge that you're unsure of, okay? So that if you know a topic very well, give yourself some more information on that, build up your confidence a little bit, and you can uh, expand upon those topics maybe as outside information or um, giving yourself some kind of points of complexity uh, when you're really diving into a topic that you have a good understanding of. If you want to take a different approach, think about some topics that you don't know very well. Okay, so as I scroll through these topics and I get into, I don't know, here's uh, time period uh, three and uh, the Articles of Confederation, and I barely remember what they do. I might go to that video and watch that so that I'm also building up my confidence by giving myself some more content on an area that I look at the title of a video and I say, oh, geez, I don't know that one very well. OK, so that's another approach. Now, I will say this. If you look at this screen and you look at these videos, they are very long. Each video is about an hour long. So there are maybe some other ways of going about that, right? Um, one way is to get through to the uh, Jock Z Productions YouTube channel, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I think that's an incredibly helpful resource. Uh, I will, as I said, I'll, I'll cycle back to some of that information. Uh, first, I want to go back to our website, right? And when I'm in the exam week Wednesday folder, and I'm back at the college rubric, and I'm back at the AP final exam prep sheet that looks like this, uh, some of the other resources, right? Because I've already talked about the top of the sheet, and the bottom of the sheet is where I opened up. Let's look at the middle of the sheet. They have a practice DBQ1 and a practice DBQ2. I don't know that I would necessarily advise you right now to sit down and write some practice DBQs. Here it is Wednesday night, okay? However, I would definitely advise you to maybe check out these two DBQ prompts and documents. Not banking on seeing a question of that topic on your exam on Friday, but getting used to seeing the format of these questions, some of them are a little bit awkward, okay? Let's take a look at this first one, for instance, because I'm not really ever in love with how they write these questions, language that they use. Uh, and on this topic right here, uh, they say our uh, prompt, um, Where was the prompt? Um, well, I'm not seeing it actually on this sheet, um, but I did see it on the other one, okay, uh, where you're actually seeing the prompt itself. And the prompts are sometimes a little bit awkward. I'm going to go back into my document and see if I just find it easier with uh, DBQ2 here, okay? Um, Let's see. DBQ2, goodness gracious. Uh, I don't actually see the prompt. You've seen what I have posted before on prompts, though. And um, you'll see there. there's definitely some awkward language. You do see some of the use of documents here, OK? Now, what I will say does work, because I've actually watched the videos, if we go back to that document, um, and this is even the most helpful out of all of them, is there's an AP review of the question link. All right, so here we see, uh, you'll actually see what the prompt is there, and you'll see two College Board certified uh, senior teachers walk through the grading of these two DBQs. So you get yourselves in the minds of a reader a little bit, okay? But again, uh, that is this AP final exam sheet uh, that I have provided for you. I'll close down some of these windows uh, and point you out again to where we get that, okay? Um, definitely, 
One thing you should absolutely know is your We've got to know your rubric. I would suggest, in fact, that you print out the rubric and have it in front of you um, so that you can make a checklist of how you're tackling uh, the essay as you write it. OK, um, it's a 10 point uh, rubric. Uh, my understanding is that five or six points should absolutely get us a three uh, that if you're up at seven, eight points, you're absolutely at a four. Uh, eight, nine, 10 points, absolutely out of five. You might even hit a five if you're at a seven. Let's talk how we get there. I've told you before in your first paragraph, give yourself contextualization a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, maybe a time period prior, what led up to those bookend dates, okay? Give yourself a thesis that makes an argument, da 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 provides richness of contrast, you get two points in your first paragraph. You use two documents where you accurately describe the content of the document. You identify the document and how it relates uh, to the prompt, okay? Um, and then if you support your thesis with those two documents, those same two documents is fine. And you describe, after you describe the document, you describe how the document supports your point. That's two more points right there if you do it well for both. So you're at one, two, three, four, five right there. Okay. You hip happy, you know, you're, you're up here at six, seven points. Okay. Uh, you use an outside uh, evidence, eight, nine. Complex understanding, 10. Complex understanding, again, is if you've been talking about uh, continuity, then talk about change, how things stayed the same. In your final paragraph, talk about how things uh, were different. If your essay was about the causes of something, uh, your complexity point, you talk about the effects of something. But you got to know that rubric and tackle it systematically. And if you do it in the order that we've gone through, like I said, I think you're up to six, seven points. and possibly like a four on this essay with no problem, okay? So make sure you know your rubric, okay? Um, when we wanna get back into now uh, the, the, the content review, okay? Um, there are a couple uh, sources that uh, I have provided for you. We go back to our website and we're in the 2020 exam week uh, when one resource is uh, crib preview, right? That is the uh, drop box of notes. It says a push time periods one through seven. It's actually three through. Seven. And this is somebody else's notes. This is another student who made public these notes on the a push subreddit on Reddit. Um, my suggestion for using these notes is print it out. I'm not sure how Dropbox will or will not affect their uh, plagiarism detectors, but I want you to have printed resources out anyway. I also want you to own what you have in front of you. So if you print this out and you're studying from this, annotate it as you go. Put question marks to what you're unsure of. Uh, put stars by things that you really do know or check marks, highlights. We thankfully spent a lot of time annotating. And here I'm actually asking you just to annotate a single kind of outline of notes. And if you have that in front of you, right, when you see the prompt, you're going to know where to turn to on these notes and you're going to see all the information in front of you and you're going to see what you own in front of you. OK, so this is a really good resource to have in front of you on the day of the exam. Um, these notes were made by watching the Joxy Productions videos. Now, I have linked that for you back on our 2020 exam week Wednesday folder. Go to the website and videos. Again, that's where maybe you find this one, the video you're watching right now. This will be up here shortly. Here's Z. Okay, so when you go to the Joxy videos, here's their YouTube channel is what I've linked. You've got awesome stuff up here. Overall exam review, what to expect. Here's a 11 minute video on just time periods one through five, a 41 minute video on time periods six through nine. Uh, I've got uh, crash course videos uh, by chapter, 
uh, by time period. Here's a 24 minute video on just time period four. You could spend all your time watching all these videos. But again, what I would suggest is when you consider you know, this document and uh, your general making of a timeline or outline, uh, consider watching the videos that you feel really strong about and you build uh, a greater strength or consider some topics that uh, you don't know so well and you want to increase your confidence on those topics. The Joxy YouTube video is a is a great, great resource, okay? The other one, of course, that I will uh, put up here for you is Gilder Lehrman. Now, that's linked a couple times now on our final site. But here, for instance, we're sitting at time period four and I've got an eight minute time period for video. They've got their timelines, okay? This is, by the way, potentially a resource you can have open on your computer. But again, I really like the idea of having some printed resources in front of you. But Gilder Lamb is really good for letting you take some of that big picture. Um, the format of this test is great in that if you feel like, gosh, I can't recall the particular year of a proclamation or an act passed or the year that you know a war began or something like that, you've got that information kind of at your fingertips, okay? Um, so again, in terms of studying, we've got the Dropbox notes, we've got Joxy, we've got Gilder Lehrman, okay? All of that stuff is here, uh, Gilder Lehrman, Joxy, this video and, and the Zoom as well here, but going back to the crib notes are there. So a lot of like last minute kind of prep materials. Okay, and then as I said, the, the next thing you want to do is make sure you're just kind of got your logistics right away. The last thing you want to do is feel like on Friday you're scrambling for having any idea of what this is, exam is actually going to look like on your desktop. How am I going to submit it? Where's my AP ticket? Don't be scrambling 10 minutes for the exam to become comfortable on that. Okay, so my suggestion is study. Wednesday night, study Thursday morning, study a little bit Thursday afternoon, give yourself in some blocks, watch some of the videos, enhance the Dropbox notes as you do so, okay? Print that out, print out a rubric, have that all kind of done and ready to go come Thursday afternoon. And then Thursday night, go through the checklist, go through the logistics, um, set up the space where you're taking the exam, okay? And so you've kind of got a comfortable, quiet space. You feel good about the technology. Your browser is fresh. Turn your computer off the night before so that you don't have any restart issues. Okay. And then you've got kind of a lot of that pressure kind of behind you. And you've got your workspace prepared with notes that are going to be really good and helpful during the course of this exam. That last piece of advice then would be sleep on Thursday night. Get a good meal. Go to bed at a reasonable hour. Uh, sleep in a little bit if you want. The, the exam's not until Friday afternoon, but then get up, get a workout in, okay? Uh, get a small, light meal, take a shower, and feel good about yourself going in in that workplace that you've prepared for yourself. Um, I really, really believe that if you follow these steps between here, Wednesday afternoon and Friday afternoon, you all are going to be in a really good place to go kill this thing. I uh, I love you all, man. I'm rooting for you. I got faith in you. Hit me up if you need me. Um, but uh, let's go kill this thing, y'all. Take care.